In this unit, we're going to talk about rounded edges and rounded shapes and how to make useful objects with them. Now, one thing that you must understand is that the simpler the shape is, the easier it is for the computer to control. To make a flat surface is actually very easy. It only requires a few points. Let's demonstrate this. Now, if we're in Modeler and we go and create a simple box, like so, you will see that that box can be expressed with very little geometry. If we go into points mode, you can see that basically the box contains eight points. And for edge mode, that's a little more complicated. Essentially, we have six faces. Now, the computer doesn't have to work very hard to remember that at all. So if I delete that one, and let's say we want to do something like a ball. You'll notice that that, if we go into a numeric pad, let's say we want to make it easy for the computer and give it a uh, consistent radius, which will make it all three dimensions. You'll see, obviously, there's a lot more points involved in that. And in order to make this work, you have to have a lot of geometry because the computer isn't actually making a round ball. What it's doing is creating a series of planes that are sort of angled in relation to each other to give the illusion of a smooth surface. Now, to make that smooth, you need more geometry. So therefore, if I add more sides to it, and I add more segments, you see you can get a much more smooth looking ball. And uh, the only problem is that creates a lot more math for the computer to remember. And those surfaces are a little bit harder to control. But it does, in fact, work. There's a few shortcuts and tricks that we can use, uh, but it's important to understand that this is what we're doing. Now, to show you a more simple trick, if we were to go and make a disk, and I'll check and make sure the radiuses are the same. Say 1.3. and we pull the disk up. This is actually a pretty good example. You can see here, and I'll leave that over here a little bit. You can see here that this shape has only sides, no segments. And so it's got the illusion of a round edge only, in the, only on the circumference. Now, if you wanted to bend that, you would find that rather difficult. So I go into my Modify tab, and I choose Bend. You can see that it doesn't really work. What it will do is it will, it will change the angles down here and up here, but it won't bend the shape. And that's because this, the program cannot actually bend a flat plane. So if we were to start again, and create a disk. And in numeric pad, let's say I once again make sure those are the same which they are. And notice I've got 24 sides, but let's say I put some segments there like that. Now, if I go to modify and bend, see the difference? So now I can make pasta and things of that nature. So that is why we're doing this. Now another thing to look at, let's say we're starting with a cube. And let's say we want to get some initial geometry without really doing any work. If you hit the tab key, you can in effect create the illusion of geometry. The computer will actually create some of those excess curves uh, kind of after the fact. Now, this seems like a great idea. It seems like you can do all kinds of things with this, but it is limited. And the most important thing to understand is that a 3D printer will not recognize this. This is not actually adding geometry. Uh, but it gives you some possibilities that you can use in computer graphics. For example, let's say I'm in point mode and I grab this point here, and let's say I deselect it 
down here, and I go to modify move. That point is actually the corner of that cube. It just happens to be out here. And if I were to deselect that and hit tab again, you can see that that's what I've done. So tab on gives the illusion of more of a curve, but you can have some fun with that. Let me show you where that can be particularly useful. Let's say we're creating a ball again. And in this particular case, the ball has a lot of geometry. So let's go ahead and reduce that a little bit. Because the idea here is to give the computer a little bit less to work with so that it can think a little clearer. And let's say we go into point mode and grab a few points. And let's say we move those points a little bit. So you can see what we're doing here is we're, we're literally stretching the face of that sphere. So now if we were to deselect those points, go into polygon mode and select those polygons, let's say, and hit tab, you see that those particular polygons now have a more rounded edge. And that can be useful. You can literally sculpt these images. But once again, if you do this and you want to 3D print it, it will not work because what it will do is it will return to whatever it was before you subpatched it. So if you wanted to create something more genuine, you can start with a cube and go into numeric pad and choose radius up the radius and you'll see what it's doing there is it's it's creating a bevel and if you include radius segments you can give it a rounded edge so you can do it that way but let's say you're working with a different type of shape or you want to do it differently all you would have to do is go into the multiply tab and choose rounder and you get much the same possibilities so in the numeric tab once again you can select the presets are oftentimes the easiest way to work with this and give it a, a specific amount of rounding. You can see it can go really crazy if you can go too far. But let's say we choose that. And the difference there is that is actual geometry. Now one of the issues that you will run into is that the computer will have to store more information to make that happen. Uh, and in some cases that may cause the possibility of impossible geometry. You can see a little bit of that happening there. So if I go even, even less than that, let's say I go down to 0.5, that's a little more realistic. And just to give you an example of how complex meshes can become, we have a human being here, and human beings in this context are three-dimensional scans. And if you look, you can see a lot of curves. In fact, there's virtually no straight edges in a person. And the closer we get, the more you can see what the mesh actually looks like. So you can see how many points that that would entail. There would be literally millions of them. 